Hey, it's John Time, and this is Cooking Avenue, and today we are going to be making a bit of a Korean-style omelet uh, based off of omelets that I've had and are copying, <laughs> you know, doing that from memory. So t today we start off with butter, you know, it's always a good day when you start off with butter, and that's Kerrygold. Not too much of a fan of dairy, but I don't know if eggs are dairy, but I like eggs of all the dairy things. And uh, these are some organic eggs and they're free range. While the laws here in the United States do not really mandate that the chickens or the birds even need to be very technically free range when they are free range, I think they need like a window in their coop or something. It's kind of BS. But typically uh, when they're fed like organic food, it's typically better than the inorganic food. You know, I feel like uh, it's just, it's much cheaper food. It really matters what, what the actual chickens eat because it affects the flavor of the meat. I said that about beef, it's the same thing for chickens. Not as important as beef, but you know, it's, it's not bad. I hardly buy eggs, so I don't mind the extra expense, really. Also in America, we put our butter in the fridge. I don't know why, uh, it's, it's American. Uh, and we've already yoked up the eggs, because I'm having them a bit scrambled. I'm gonna lay them on flat, and we've already buttered on the pan. This is an aluminum pan. You don't have to worry about the butter falling off. <laughs> Not because it's aluminum, but it's got a ceramic coating. I don't like Teflon. Teflon is like plastic. Plastic is made of gasoline. You don't want gasoline in your mouth. Uh, so the ceramic coating is good. These pans don't last very long. Aluminum's really unhealthy. As long as the ceramic coating is in place, it'll protect you from the aluminum. Uh, aluminum can cause things like Alzheimer's and my grandma had that so I have a natural inclination to have a fear of Alzheimer's. <laughs> I think I think that was in the movie The Notebook. I haven't seen that one but movies are okay. Uh, let's see. Yeah so I put I put the butter on actually by hand and I put it on laid it on thick. I cook with lower heat so that the butter doesn't really turn brown because when it's brown it's burnt like light brown's okay but when it starts getting dark brown you know you overdid it so we've got some vegetables or fruit i don't even i don't even know this is a, a garlic clove or garlic heart i don't know what it's called it's garlic and we also have chives and oyster mushrooms, which I'm gonna peel in a sec. Also, I'm getting some, some Great American Pandemic, or uh, Great American Shutdown beard action going on. Hmm. And then we got some cheap cheese. I don't really typically buy cheese. I mean, 249 had cheapest cheese, that's kind of expensive. Um, and yeah, now to prepare the ingredients. You know, this is just put on there with saran wrap. That's kind of cool. Uh, plastic is, seems a bit wasteful, but I guess it's resealable because, you know, whatever. Here's some of the shroomies. I like to use the word gnarly, gnarly, gnarly. They're cool. The other, the other oyster mushrooms our grand or giant king oyster mushrooms. I'm excited for those. I uh, hope, hope you guys can see and that it's not too small. But we're gonna, we're gonna make some space over here on the counter. Small, small New York City counter. And we're just gonna pour egg right into the pan and this is gonna make like a bit of like um like a pancake kind of kind of deal you know the way that it sits and then I'm gonna put everything on top of it just sprinkle it on like an omelet pancake and then I'm gonna let it cook and then we're gonna roll it up so with these oyster mushrooms, what you want to do is 
for, uh, I guess to get the consistency right, you want to tear them from like the large fans into strips. And it's crazy because the way that the grain works with the, um, I don't know, the, uh, how, however you call like these little fins, you know, these little fins here, like they just, t they go all the way down the stem and they just, they just tear, you know? It's actually really nice. The thinner you get them, the better. Get some like meat chunks, some stringy pulled meat. And I mean, like, I don't know uh, if you consider, I consider egg to be a meat, you know, some people consider it to be dairy. It's got uh, enough protein in it. And I do think I want some, some more mushroom in my concoction. And that's how that looks. Very little smell, like more of a sweet earth kind of smell. These are so fresh actually. And they're, they're a little bit more pale than what I'm used to, in all honesty. So sprinkle these about. Try, I'm trying to space them out a bit. You know, I'm always putting too much ingredients. It's so funny. I don't know what the difference is. So you, you got your you got your green chives, which are like green onion, I guess, I think. And then you have like your white onion, which I'm not sure if that's the name, but I know it's the not red onion. And um or Spanish onions, I guess, ceboyas. <laughs> so like, I have those later. I'm really excited to cook those with my chicken. That's for dinner. I'm gonna take your paring knife or paring knife, whatever you wanna call it, depending where you're from. And I cut the bottom of, of the garlic clove right off. And I tend to cut the top too. Well, I do that for onions. I don't know about those. We're going to make a mess here. And uh, yeah, I think what one clove should do it. It's a really large clove. Uh, we'll store this on the side of the camera. So you want to peel it. Peel your a little garlic clove. This this was the garlic. I cut the bottom off. Pretty on this side, ugly on this side now because I've ruined it. Uh, and then you want to get all the skin off. To help with this, I like to cut the top and the bottom off. And then it gives you, uh, I mean, see, look, the knife just start doing it all, all together. You kind of want to just dig your nails in there until you get like a silky smooth rubbery kind of finish. There you go. And even your, your caps will, will, will still be there. Don't throw those out. You know, you want to save as much of your produce as you can. And then you want to take like a larger knife, like, like this cleaver, this green boy, and you just take the knife and you place it on top of said clove and you smush it. And when you smush it, it looks like this, all smushed. 
and that makes it, you know, you put it all together and you move this back and forth, you know? And then you can turn it sideways and mince it again. Or maybe this is called dicing, I don't know. What is minced? That is, what, you know what minced is? Minced is a weird and funny word. Oh my God, it smells so good. Now the older garlic gets, like this has been sitting for a while, the older that it gets, the stronger it smells. And it's got like a very sticky oil. So it'll stick to your knife. If you run between your fingers, your fingers will, will, will stick together. I think I'm just showing you stuff that other cooking shows might not even remember. The only other cooking show that I watch is uh, Rachel Ray and Epic Meal Time, and those are two different shows. <laughs> um, I do watch some tutorials on YouTube. I, I'm a big fan of the Korean ones. It's crazy. And I didn't start watching them until I started shopping at H Mart. So that goes to show like what just being in a certain neighborhood and your like the cultures you're exposed to really influence who you are as a person because the next thing you know like just from from being in that neighborhood now, now you're doing <laughs> whatever whatever that neighborhood's about so i don't know i don't really cook with chives too much to tell you the truth so and I'm, I'm i'm no enemy to putting too much in there's so many memes and jokes on the internet about like, oh, the recipe calls for one clove of garlic, and then they have like a photo of seven. That's funny, and I do that sometimes, but for this one, I don't want something too garlicky. You know, I think that that is actually a really healthy amount, but I'm always down for too much onion, you know. Or maybe, or not. <laughs> Or not, you know, like, we'll, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Oh, look at this. This is like a, a really weird thing to cut because it's so long. It's, uh, I'm so not used to cooking, uh, cutting long things in such small sizes. I think anything could be a, uh, an innuendo, even if it, like, is the antithesis of sexy. <laughs> So, I don't know. Let's try the ends. I should be more careful and wash these, but they look clean. <laughs> Whatever. They have a, the bottoms had a good consistency. Let's try the tops. It's the same. I'm pretty sure that the, if there was a base to this, that it was it was chopped off. So small prepared store chives, very, very good and easy. So I'm gonna put these in by hand actually, just cause like they're, uh, they're not cut entirely all the way through. So I'm gonna twist them as I drop them. This is gonna have like a very lovely Earth and green tone and yellow. Very earthy. Can't say the word earthy enough. I think Earth Day was recent. Um, and then as for the cheese, I mean, like, some of the recipes called for mayonnaise, you know, like, on, on one, once it's a finished product. But I almost want to skip the cheese, you know? Let's skip the cheese. No dairy. No real dairy. We will, we will save this for when we do croissants again. I have a new recipe that I want to try for that. Or not a new recipe, but um, it, we're going to make the croissants ourselves with like a Pillsbury brand prepared, whatever. And then we're going to fashion it into little flowers. And that'll, that'll be really nice. So I do, I, I do repeats. I, re, I repeat stuff quite, quite a bit. So we're going to put this on lower heat while we... 
or medium heat. I'm going to put it on medium because there's plenty of mass now. So like when there's no mass or uh, nothing inside the actual pan, you'll find that the butter cooks remarkably faster. But when you got a whole bunch of junk in it and the heat can dissipate throughout, uh, you don't have to worry about the butter burning as much. Some people don't like the flavor of butter with their... Uh, you know, in their pans or, or with eggs, but I, I don't like using oil because oil uh, heats up to a much higher temperature at a faster rate than butter does. And I feel like butter allows the food to cook a little bit more evenly. And it should be more healthy too, because oil becomes the opposite of uh, of chocolate. Now I eat chocolate or, or cacao because it has antioxidants. Now when, when you heat up oil, it, it has like an oxidization property, which is unhealthy, you know? And that, that'll like actually, not, I don't wanna say mess, mess with your emotions, but it is it, it definitely is gonna affect the brain. You know, you want, um, those are called free radicals in the way that those molecules bond. So you want antioxidants, you don't want, you don't want oxidants. You want to breathe in oxygen, but you don't want it um, getting built up in places where it's not supposed to be. And we're, we're gonna let this, uh, I guess, pancake. And then after it's done pancaking, then we're gonna, we're gonna flip it. <laughs> Now, I didn't, I don't want to lift this, so we're going to move the camera over. You know, I didn't want to mix it entirely in, you know, like stir it about. So, like, when I do flip it, a lot of these ingredients are going to be on the bottom, and they're going to heat up. And hopefully there's enough butter to keep the... Uh, seal going and we're going to use the spatula to hopefully flip it to the best of our ability now pancakes are difficult to flip <laughs> and this is the equivalent of a very big pancake there's not much room to move it around because it's not like a like a big skillet. It's just a frying pan, and I've used up all the space, so I kind of got a get a perfect bullseye <laughs> when I do the flip. It's gonna be hard to keep this thing from breaking, you know? I almost wish I had another plant pan that I could just flip it onto, you know? <laughs> You know what, maybe I can slide it off the pan into this plate. Oh, I did it, I did it! <laughs> and, and that might give us a chance to uh, put that low heat and put some more butter on. <laughs> What's crazy is like, this is like one take. It's not like I'm doing it multiple times. Uh, and I'm also experimenting because, you know, I'm a busy guy. I have like things to do throughout my day. You know, I, I have so long of a lunch hour. Work from home life. So with, see how it's turning brown? I don't really like that too much, but taking the pan at low heat, Oh, 
not, it's actually not too brown. Got a nice white, white going on. But not melting it on the actual burner really helps keep it nice and white. If you do it on the burner, it's gonna turn brown. So I'm gonna reduce the heat a little bit. As to avoid that burning sensation. And then we are going to actually Sit, and then once it gets hard enough, we're gonna try to shimmy it a bit because it's almost perfect. It's just off, but seriously, we did do it again. Oh yeah. So. And then you know, like the last video I did, I think was the snack video, the ASMR. Maybe I'll maybe I'll eat this on tape. It's a long video. We're at 21 minutes. Probably not gonna eat this on tape. But that, the, 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 the snack after, I did cook the steak, I did it medium rare. I did it over the skillet in the um, cast iron, which I'll show you here. It's a bit dirty, so I'm not gonna. So, I cooked in the skillet on the stove top. Cast iron's easy, because you just, you just scrape the, um, the grease off. I was a little bit lazy last night, so I didn't completely degrease it. I just, there's little spouty sides on the on the edges that you could just pour the juices out into the garbage can or, or wherever you have a disposal. And perfect, perfectly even. A little bit of brown, that, that probably is the butter. And And yeah, you know, um, it, oh yeah, medium rare all the way. It came out so good. So, so, so good. Usually, I like to cook it in the oven a lot, uh, but cooking in the pan, it could be a little bit more messy. I, I cleaned it yesterday, so I was like, let's make mess already. And... Uh, and it was delicious. I did have more of the snacks. I had some more of the kimchi and more of the seaweed. It's good to eat that stuff while it's still fresh. I would have liked to have the squid already. I, would have, I, I was tempted to put the squid in the omelet, but like I said, it get too tough. So there's certain foods that I know not to try and attempt. Like this this one's like like a cooking thing that where I can make an attempt to see what I get. But there's other times where I'm like, no, I can think consciously ahead of time. Like, don't experiment with that. That's probably not going to turn out good. So we're going to... I want to see what it looks like on the bottom. And tell you what it it's cooked enough, that's for sure. Oh, it's really pretty on that side. So we're gonna make it look like a little less contained. And turn the heat off. Um, It is so hot. It is so hot. This wants to be flipped again. That's how it looks. Ah! <laughs> So dope, so dope, that's how it looks. 
and we're gonna put it back on the plate. <laughs> oh, man, how how do you, how do they roll it? Okay. Now we've rolled it into a ball. Now like to roll it into like a really big thing, I would need like such a tremendous skillet um, or a tray and maybe make bake it in the oven. You know, that would be pretty dope. You know, that would be really, really dope to have like a really big one. I think I saw a Japanese recipe like that. But anyway, this is my best attempt at an experiment. We're gonna, we're gonna flatten that a bit. Flatten him out. And Let's get some little salt and pepper action going on. I think that's well deserved. Now salt isn't too healthy, but if you use a small amount, that's fine. And then that's some salted pepper, and then I have like um, peppercorn medley. So they're all different color peppercorns. And you know how I'm always saying, Oh, really change up your diet. Try to have as many varying things as possible. Make sure it's very even. Uh, so you're not missing out on anything in particular. I think colors are a really good sign of variety. So if you have any particular food, even if it's tomatoes, if there's some yellow or orange or green ones in there, or they're multicolored like green and red, those I feel are healthier because like lytroscopy tells you that um, there's different nutrition content, or even if it's just different um, pigments or pigmentation. I don't know. Maybe maybe they they have different the different pigmentation has different nutrients at different stages of its color. Like things haven't been broken down yet. We're gonna use a lot of pepper just because it looks so pretty on the plate. Look how pretty that is, so pretty, so pretty. Now while I don't own a hot sauce, I do, and I, I don't really formally own ketchup. We have like a little mason jar full of uh, ketchup packets from all the the orders that we do. And I'm, while I'm not gonna put um, ketchup on today, because I'm not like the biggest fan of ketchup in general or even on eggs, but I do like it on brats every once in a while. Yikes. Yeah, that does seem totally weird. I just rinsed a sauce packet. <laughs> I just rinsed a sauce packet. Now it's so slippery and I can't open it. The video is already long enough, you know, like, geez, chime time, you and your antics. Always getting yourself into messes. Oh yeah, yeah, so it's Cholua hot sauce, original. Mercy, mercy, mercy. So I think it just went from a Korean dish to like a little bit of a Korean Mexican fusion. I don't know if it's Mexican, but the colors are um, 
red, white, and green. And that, that could be Italian, but um, Mexico is closer to where I, I am right now than Italy. So, uh, yeah, we will, I want to throw out the rest. We'll leave it on the... <laughs> I'm doing some weird stuff here. But this is this is the final product. Cue the music. Ah. <laughs> I have music on my channel, so this is the best we got. And it's cold a little bit, so I will take a bite. I'll take a bite for the audience. I'll take a bite for the audience here. You know, I'll do things for um, for my fans per se. We'll get a. Oh, we'll just cut it in the middle. That's what it looks like, guys. And then here's the bite. It is so good. That's three eggs, mushrooms, chives, hot sauce. No need for cheese. No need for cheese. <laughs> Those two four two dollars and forty nine cents could just keep staying to themselves. Anyway, I'm Chime Time. This is Cooking Avenue. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, a little more. This is City Fox, Avon Gardner. For anyone who's who's asking, seriously, hang in there during this great American shutdown. I'll cook for you uh, when you come visit, <laughs> whenever that is. Live to love, chime time.